After a very long wait, it's time for us to finally welcome a new member to the Nikon Z lineup. I've gotten in model Alyssa so that we can test this guy out for you. We're gonna be shooting in a couple of different studios and we have a special guest, her Bernese mountain dog, Rocky. Folks, back in 2018, Nikon announced the Z6. Two years later, we got the Z6 II. And now about a three and a half year wait after that, we have the Z6 Mark III. It brings in a bunch of new features, bringing it in many ways up to date with the Z8 and Z9. Falls short in other ways, but it also brings some key video updates and specifications that we've never seen on any interchangeable lens mirrorless camera to date. Today, I've got model Alyssa in. We're going to test it out next to the Z6 II and the Z8 to see how it fits in with the lineup. Shooting with the Z6 III was a satisfying first hands-on experience. It's snappy and responsive, as you would expect for any full-frame camera being released in 2024. In terms of the autofocus, I know this is something that people are eagerly awaiting to hear. It's absolutely fine. In this kind of a setting, there was zero issues whatsoever. I would note though that like even the Z8 and Z9, it can seem like the box is being a little bit laggy, but it was actually performing really well. And when I got the files back, they were my strike rate was really high. It's not, however, as sophisticated or as sticky as the Z8 or Z9. They don't claim it to be, but it's certainly somewhere between the Z6 II and the Z8, probably a little bit ahead of the ZF. Hey folks, as you can see from the location now, I'm actually back in the studio and spending the last part of the day updating my expert setup guide. And that goes into great detail on every camera in the Nikon Z system. And it's now, as you're watching this, already updated for the Z6 III. You can check it out. It shows you all of the camera controls, physical controls on every one of the cameras. All of the initial setup and customization I recommend, as well as a complete menu deep dive to customize your camera for your use. In that, I'm incredibly in-depth and thorough. And that's how I like to do the reviews as well. I just want to acknowledge that this one was especially rushed. We had a couple of things that we needed to film today. I was just getting specifications confirmed and having to follow up and ask questions about what does this have, how does it vary on the shoot in the just few hours of hands-on time that I had. So even comparing it to say the Z9 and the Z8 reviews that I've done in the past, there I generally had all of the information for a couple of days, could digest it, think about how it fit into the range, and you know, then had basically a full day to shoot with it. But today my day has been split three ways and I've only had a few hours. So I just wanna put that disclaimer out there. This is a first hands-on and I wouldn't say it's in any ways exhaustive. Um, so given that I don't ha haven't had a full spec sheet right through to now even, um, I basically will be thinking about how this compares to the Z8, the Z6 II, and the other cameras that I have on hand so I can quickly check, you know, my, for myself in the menus how they vary. But then to compare it to other competitors on the market like the a7 IV, the R6 Mark II, those kind of things, I'll need to get it back in to do a more detailed review. So please do let me know what you'd like to see when I get it back in. So I have to admit, as I was getting ready for doing this review with the information I had, I was also looking online, seeing what people were saying in the forums, what they were hoping for, checking out what people were arguing about to see what they really care about. And there was quite a few people saying that it's a mid-range camera, you can't expect anything groundbreaking. It's That's what you pay for when you get a Z8 or a Z9 or a flagship from another brand. There are a couple of things in here, whilst it's not at a Z8 or Z9 level in terms of specification or performance, that do stand it out. And being that this has always been the lower res, more video oriented, but then the Z8 and Z9 just took video specs to the moon, 
this has actually surpassed them in some ways. So as you know, with the whole red drama, not many cameras are offering raw internal recording. The Z8 and Z9 do, this guy now does as well, both NRAW and ProRes RAW. And it's doing the ProRes 422 HQ, which is a gorgeous looking file format out of the Nikons, but it actually beats the Z8 and Z9 in some ways. They will do 4K up to 60 frames in 422, and I think it's 4.1 at 60 frames in ProRes RAW. The files are just insane though. This guy will match those, but it actually goes up to 5.4K as well. So you're able to do 5.4K at 30 frames in 422 and 6K at 30 frames in ProRes RAW. Note that when I checked that before on my 330 gigabyte card, I was going to get eight minutes of recording using the ProRes RAW. So you're going to really want to be having all of that data to consider shooting with those kind of formats. Now one of the big selling points it seems of this camera is that it's using the world's first partially stacked CMOS sensor. Now I have a fair understanding of how CMOS, BSI and stack sensors work, but I really have no idea what that means, partially stacked. What's the difference between that and fully stacked? Is it literally like half the sensory stacked and the other half isn't? I kind of thought maybe it is because it looked like the sensor has on the left there some extra circuitry, but who knows what I'm really seeing. I was kind of in mushroom mode that day and was given no information about what this means other than it's got a faster readout than the Z6 II, but hopefully some other reviews that you're watching had full and complete information and can share that with both of us. I feel like playing that game of Red Queen, try and follow the camera. Looking at the Z6 II, Z6 III and Z8 side by side, you can see the Z6 III is, you know, it's noticeably when you put them side by side, bigger in terms of dimensions, but in the hand, I didn't notice much of a difference. I think it is slightly heavier as well. Certainly the angles, when you have them all side by side like this, there is more, there's a lot that resembles the Z8 now, but then, you know, the shape of the EVF and, you know, the, the overall size and ergonomics are more aligned with the Z6 II. They're calling the Z6 III a mini Z8, and you'll remember that when the Z8 came out, it was a mini Z9, so this is now a mini mini Z9. Um, the button layout is more in line with the Z8. The card slots are the same on all of them now, C of Express Type B and a UHS Type II, but the, whilst the buttons on the back are kind of arranged more like the Z8, they're not exactly the same, and the top dials are more aligned to the Z6 II, so it's somewhere in between the two of them, and the button configuration doesn't precisely match either of them, so no matter what you're coming from, it's still going to be something of an adjustment. There are still some differences in terms of internals. If we had the original Z6 here, that was a single X-Speed 6, a Z6 II, you got dual X-Speed 6s, and then the Z8, and now the Z6 III are both using the latest X-Speed 7. So that's what you have to thank, I think, for supporting the higher video formats and getting the, the better autofocus performance. But the autofocus isn't the same. I know, I think, you know, people were really, the main things I heard from you all were that you wanted 
to keep the good ISO performance that it, I didn't hear anyone really saying that they wanted a big bump in resolution, which is handy because it stayed exactly the same. But a lot of people, it was that they wanted basically a Z6 II, but with the autofocus of a Z8. Now, it's not they don't advertise it as being at that level. It's somewhere in between the two. The Z6 II and III both have 273 autofocus points with 90% coverage. No official word if it's the same autofocus module or not. I would be leaning towards guessing that it is. The Z8 and Z9, however, are 473 points and it is just a more sophisticated system. Now, as I said at the outset, this is a pre-production camera. So what I'm finding on here isn't what is necessarily going to ship to you guys, but I know people have a bugbear about the Z6 II and Z7 II and their autofocus, but for the kind of work I do, they actually both work fine. Um, for portraiture and everything, the eye detect, you don't have the same autofocus mode options, but the performance is still good, and I didn't have an issue with either of them, but still, I wouldn't say that the autofocus, how sticky it was and how quickly it recognized the eye was as good on the 6.3 as it is on the 8 and 9. And there were times where the whole face was visible and this guy was only picking up the face rather than the eye or when it got the wrong part of the dog's face. Um, but as I said, this is a pre-production camera after all. Oh, and a big one, the screen type. So, Z6 II has the tilting, Z8 and Z9 have tilting, the Z6 III now has the variable angle one, which I am struggling to open, which some people love and some people just don't. Now, I can see the pluses and minuses on both. There are times where this is really helpful. There's times if you're going to be filming yourself where to be able to flip it around is handy instead of using an external monitor. But if you're using it primarily for stills, yes, some people prefer to be able to have, to be looking right at the back of the camera rather than off to the side to be able to get to that variable angle that they're looking for there. Now, one thing I noticed on this, comparing it, say, to the Z8, there's a bit of a design flaw. If you look at the Z8, the card door opens easily. There's clearance between the strap lug and the top of the card door. But the smaller size on the Z6 III means that it actually catches. And if you want to be able to remove the CF Express Type B card, you really need to lift that strap lug out of the way, then open the door so the door can open the whole way. It's kind of a messy integration and it's more pronounced than it was on say the Z6 II, Z7 II due to the angles of the top plate. Now this style of screen is handy for video but it's something to think about when you have the HDMI plugged in, you're really limited in the angles that you can work with. Whereas if you're using the traditional screen on the Z6, you can still get high-low angles. On this guy, now we don't have that option unless you're folded out, and then you're limited to this kind of a range with the HDMI in. Now in terms of pricing, so the Z6 III actually don't have official pricing on it right now, but it looks like it's gonna be something like 10% more expensive than an A7 IV or a Canon R6 II. Um, and so the Z6 II came out at 2000 US dollars, adjusted for inflation, that's like 2400 and a bit. So looks like this will be a few hundred dollars more expensive than that. The Z8, if it's full price, is 4,000 and the Z9 is five and a half thousand. So if you're only needing the 24 megapixel, you want the best video capabilities and the other things this is bringing to the table then, it does seem like a great way to get it. No 8K, but that isn't a criticism because 24 megapixel sensor just physically can't do 8K. You need something like 30, 32 megapixel. But the fact that we're getting up to 6K on this, which is essentially the resolution of the sensor, um, it's pretty great. And as I said, I can't think of another camera that's giving you, well, there probably isn't one that's giving you 6K ProRes RAW internal. 
Maybe the only other thing out there would be actually a RED camera. The Canon R6 II does give you that specification, but it's only externally via HDMI. And with that camera only using dual SD cards, it probably actually wouldn't be able to do it because SDs aren't fast enough to capture ProRes RAW. Now, I have to say I'm really impressed with the video formats that the Z6 III is capable of capturing, but I am a little bit concerned about how it's going to do thermal management. I don't wanna cast stones, this is not a final one, and I haven't fully tested it, so I'm not saying that there is an issue, but I would be very surprised if it's able to do all of these formats without overheating. The reason I say that, the Z9, I can do all of the formats and Occasionally you might get a hot card warning if you're shooting with either a shitty card or you're shooting like in the desert, but never, I can't remember ever getting a hot camera warning and certainly never has it ever shut down. The Z8 shooting in medium to high quality videos or like high to very high I should probably say, you do, even on the best cards at times, get hot card warnings and hot camera warnings. Now, seeing that this guy will let you do, for example, ProRes RAW at 6K 30p or at 4K at 60p, and it's that much smaller again, I really just don't know how it's going to go. Some of these formats are so intensive in terms of the amount of data they're writing, it's quite incredible. Like on a 128 gig card, you might get a minute of ProRes RAW or something like that at the highest settings. Um, so that's something I'll definitely be getting the camera back in to do more testing on. This week in Hong Kong, I believe the camera's pretty much out being tested all week, but let's see. Okay, folks, so I hope that was useful for you and answered some of your questions. As I'm sure, I, this video included a lot of voiceover to make up for the things that I wasn't able to get on camera. Um, I would like a lot, a lot more hands-on time with this to give you any kind of definitive conclusion, but I would love to know from you guys, what do you think of it? I'd love to know how many different Z6 III videos you've watched already before this one, and what questions remain for you, because I will try to get it in again to do more testing, see if we can put a final version up against some other brand's cameras to see how it's performing overall. But for those of you who are looking for better autofocus, similar resolution, and, you know, to remain the video option, I think this pretty much delivers, but with the different screen, lacking in some of the features, and kind of a hybrid of controls, I'll be interested to know if this is going to meet your needs and if you're thinking about it for stills or video. Big thanks to Alyssa for joining me today and putting up with the rush schedule and thank you for bringing Rocky. Oh, God. Oh, made my day. That, that's the real reason why we were rushed today because I was over giving him cuddles for half the time. We will have Alyssa's Instagram below if Rocky has one, also his Instagram below. Let me know your questions and we'll see you guys soon.